everyone. Thank you for joining us today on this journey of love. Today we're going to be continuing our teachings in 1 John chapter 3, going through verses 7 and 10. So if you guys have your Bibles ready, let's go ahead and start with the scripture. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning since from sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's works. No one who is born of God will continue to sin, because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning, because they have been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother or sister. Awesome. So. We have the scriptures, we're just going to jump in some commentary, so I hope you guys are ready. We start off this verse in verse 7, it says, Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray, showing that if we do not keep our focus on Jesus and stay in fellowship with Him, that we are vulnerable to being led astray. And this is a way that Satan likes to distract us. So Satan is very distractive, uh, or, uh, deceptive, and these are things that he likes to do since the beginning of time. To distract humans from you know from God and he usually does it with worldly things with with lies and things that might not seem so harsh or so sinful at the time but they turn into something that, that saying if you give the inch if you get the devil an inch he takes a mile for we are part of this world and we must remember that we must always stay on guard guarding our hearts and not leaving it open to lies so we always must stay on that guard and understand that we're in this world so we can't just say, oh, and forget about what's really going on in this world and the battle that we're in between, between Satan. So then we jump into the one who does what is righteous just as he is righteous. So just as he is righteous, that's talking about Jesus Christ and how he was a righteous being on this earth and he walked this earth in righteousness. So we must stay in fellowship with Jesus Christ and we'll, we will walk in that righteousness as Jesus Christ did on this earth. So we see that the one that is sinful is of the devil, showing us that the devil has been sinning since the beginning. He has been a murderer from the beginning, stated in John 8, 44. As he is the father of lies, there is no truth in him. We see this in Genesis where he goes against God and is thrown out of heaven, and he continues the sinful acts in the Garden of Eden. This showing that sin comes from the devil, and these are his works, showing that he is the creator of sin. The purpose that Jesus came was to destroy the devil works. He also, this was also stated in Hebrews 2.15. So we see here in these few verses that Satan has been sinning from the beginning. He's, he's the one that created the sin with, with uh, Adam and Eve in, in the garden where he tempted Eve to eat the apple. That was the first sin, the fall of a man, and the devil was the one that tempted. So we can see and we can always look back on that first thing of how the devil acts in our lives where he tempts us was something that might not seem so hurtful or might or he might like he would did with Eve that where he tries to lie and say God's holding stuff from you you need to take this apple to see the truth so we just need to stay on guard with that and understand that that's how the devil operates so then in verse 9 we see again that no one of that no one born of God will continue to sin and the seed of God has been planted in us and remains in us this we could also call our conviction that once we become part of God and accept His Son as our Savior, He is in us, guiding us down the straight and narrow path He has for our lives. This is how there is no sin in us when we are born in Him, for the Lord is in us. But if we are led astray, that means we have another God guiding our ways, which would be the, the God of this world, the devil. So God has planted that seed in us, and when we accept that seed, when we accept Jesus Christ, we have the Holy Spirit guiding us and condemning us on what is right and wrong and if we do not listen to that voice and we choose to listen to the voice of Satan um, he leads us astray and down that, that path of the sinful natures of this world and that's the kind of can there's there's just simple, there's no gray area you either have the Holy Spirit the ch you're a child of God that's guiding your steps and is leading you every day or you have the child of the, you're a child of the devil and you have sin and you have worldly natures leading your desires of every day and it's a very simple way to see what is what, what where your path is 
is by just t- turning in it, you could even ask God, where, where in the Lord I lie? Who is my, who am I following right now? So I see that throughout that passage. So then how we become a child of God is stated in John 3, 3, where we must be born again and we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts and we, we take him and our and we really truly mean it. We just don't say it. We It's really of a, our words are expressing it, but it's really an action as well as where Jesus Christ enters in us when we start following that, that his will or his way in of being righteous. And then we see that we can tell if someone's a child of God if they're living their life every day in the righteous way that Jesus did. As well, they must be loving to their brothers and sisters, which would be the people of this world. And we, as it says in John three sixteen, that Jesus came to save the world. Or he sent his only son to save the world. So the love that we have for the people of this world is in that a sense where it's the people on the earth of this world. And then our brothers, our sisters are the the, the people that walk alongside us. So in a sense, we have that relationship of our brothers and sisters, of children of God. When you're a child of God, that's the brothers and sisters that we have. And then we must be a light to the to the world, to the children of the devil, so they see the change and the righteousness that we, we have, and they become a brother or sister of us. And we also, in that sense, that's showing love to them and the people of this, of this of children of the devil. As Jesus came to save this world and the people of the earth. So, just to conclude on this, on these three verses, throughout this passage, the Lord reveals how we are to avoid being led astray, and that we must stay righteous, as Jesus did. For the ones that will lead astray are not of us, and is of the devil. For they are of the sins of the world. This means that their their ways are going to take you down a road that will lead to death. For if they are of God, they will lead you towards the Father and Jesus, as Jesus did. So when Jesus walked this earth, he always led everyone towards his Father, towards towards heaven. The beautiful things is that Jesus came to destroy the ways of the devil and so that we can le- lean on him for the path that brings us to eternity. We must stay on guard for Satan has been around a long time and knows the word more than we do, as he used it against Jesus in the desert. So as Jesus was coming out of his 40-day fast, Satan used the word against, tried to use it against God, and in the, in the sense, so that, that shows us that Satan knows the Bible as well. So that's a good way to determine is people that lead us astray, they might know the Bible as well, but they don't know, they don't have the, the spirit, and they don't lead, a, lead it towards heaven, and that one thing where the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. But Jesus knew the truth and had the authority to speak the truth. This is the same authority that we have. When Jesus is inside us, we have that same authority. So when Jesus came down from the, the Sermon on the Mount, the, all the people are saying, he, you know he spoke because he walked in that authority. And that's the same authority we have with Jesus Christ. It is, it is what God has planted in us. When we are become born of him, this is a choice that we must take for the Lord is not to violate our free will, for the lo- that is not love. So God will not violate our free will and push us towards these things. He, he He's asking for our hearts and that desire. Once we surrender our hearts to him, he takes hold of us and he guides us on that path. Our choice is, is to grow with God or the devil. Two decisions that we are created to s- decide. So the, 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 the purpose we are created is to give God glory or give glory God. But in that same sense, he's not going to violate our free will. So he gives us that choice of free will to choose to live for him or to live for this world. So I hope we, uh, as Christians or as, as people of the world, um, I know people don't might not understand this that are you know of the world, but I, I, I pray that this shows and reveals to you there's only two choices, heaven or hell. So I hope you guys enjoy this. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them. Much love. Thank you. Mm-hmm.